Hello, physics students. Here is the teaching video for the Concept Development Practice page 26-1. You are going to need a calculator, possibly, um, or your phone if you want to use that as a calculator and a ruler. And we're talking about sound, kind of discussing and kind of um, shoring up some of our understandings of, about sound. So we see our first question here is talking about two major classes of waves being longitudinal and transverse. Remember that transverse, um, the wave moves this direction, but the medium goes up and down. And these we typically kind of draw as like the sine wave, okay, for math class. Longitudinal, right, are the ones that we kind of draw like this here, right? They move this way, and the particles vibrate back and forth, typically, so for longitudinal. And sound waves are indeed a longitudinal wave. The frequency of a sound signal refers to how frequently the vibrations occur. A high-frequency sound is heard as a high pitch, wavelength, or speed. Remember that wavelength is the distance between, oftentimes we just say crests. So that wouldn't make sense um, for the sound is heard as a high um, wavelength. Speed is just distance per time. Okay, and so what we hear is um, Frequency of saw of vibrations, a higher frequency sound is going to, we perceive it, our ears perceive it as a high pitch. The sketch below shows a snapshot of the compressions and rarefactions of the air in a tube as the sound moves toward the right. Okay, so the sound is moving this way. The dots represent molecules. With a ruler, the wavelength of the sound wave is measured to be. So, again, this compression, right? This is a compression where all of the particles are close together. The space kind of in between, that's a rare fraction. And again, this compression occurs when this edge of this tuning fork is moving in this way. Okay, so the tuning fork is moved that way. The rare fraction occurs when that tuning fork kind of vibrates back out. So the tuning fork, the tines of this tuning fork are kind of vibrating out and in, out and in, out and in. And when it vibrates out, it creates a compression. When it vibrates back in, it creates a rare fraction. So, this wavelength is a little bit different than these um, transverse, right? Because here we would kind of measure from here to here for a wavelength. Remember our symbol for wavelength is that lambda. Here, our wavelength is one of these compressions to the next compression. And I'm going to try to kind of be um, towards the middle of a compression. So if I kind of say that this is the middle of a compression, okay? And then here's my next one, so like here to here, which looks like it is two and a half centimeters. Okay, so there's my wavelength here, and it's about 2.5 centimeters. Compared to the wavelengths of high-pitched sounds, the wavelengths of low-pitched sounds are so this is getting at the fact that we set up here that a high frequency sound is heard as a high pitch. So a high frequency equals a high pitch. So a low frequency is going to be a low pitch sound. Now that's important because remember um, the speed of the sound is always the same. So we have that C equals wavelength times frequency, okay? So if we want to talk about how wavelength and frequency are related, remember we solve for frequency on one side, so frequency would equal the speed of sound over the wavelength. 
And because we have one in a kind of numerator and one in a denominator, remember that that means that they are inversely proportional. Meaning as one goes up, the other goes down. So if we have a low pitch, if this is the pitch is going down, then that means that the wavelength has to be going up. So it is a long wavelength. Suppose you set your watch by the sound of the noon whistle from a factory three kilometers away. Compared to the correct time your watch will be. So again, remember, it takes time for that sound wave to travel the three kilometers to the person and their ear, okay? And so because that takes time, that means that there's gonna be a delay, right? Here's the sound going off and a mo sometime later, that sound reaches our ear. So our watch will actually be behind due to the fact that sound only moves at about 340 or meters per second. So it will differ from the correct time by, that's what this equation over here is doing. It's saying time equals distance divided by velocity. We know the distance is three kilometers, which is the same as 3,000 meters. And we know that the velocity that we're using is 340 meters per second for the speed of sound. So with our calculator, we do 300, or sorry, 3,000 divided by 340, which gives us 8.8 .8 seconds. So of our choices here, right, it's about nine seconds. We would round that to be about nine seconds. So your watch should be nine seconds behind the time at the factory. Six sound waves travel fastest in, all right? So again, we talked about this, and this has to do because the particles have to bump into each other. The sound travels fastest when the particles are close together. So at some time in the past, you've learned about solids, liquids, and gases, and you learned that the particles in a gas are the furthest or farthest apart, and the particles in the solid are the closest together. So since we know that the sound particles have to kind of bump into each other to be transmitted and to um, propagate or move that sound wave, okay? When the particles are close together, a smaller movement means that the next set of particles are um, made to vibrate at the same time. So sound waves actually move fastest in solids, right? Liquids would sort of be the medium or middle in speed and gases would be the slowest. If the child's natural frequency of swinging is once every four seconds, so that means that they kind of come here and then they come back, and that time is four seconds to do that. Okay. Um, for maximum amplitude, the man should push at a rate of once every, right? Takes four seconds, two seconds to go to the front, two seconds to come back. So he should push once every four seconds. If the man in question seven pushes in the same direction twice as often, his pushes, right? So he, instead of pushing once every four seconds, he pushes every two seconds, but at two seconds, the girl's over here, right? So that his pushes will not be effective because the swing will be pushed twice as often, or sorry, Every other push will oppose 
the motion of the swing. Like if he actually makes contact with her over here, right, he's pushing her this way when she's getting ready to come back the other way. So that's not going to be effective. The frequency of the tuning fork is 440 hertz. It will not be forced into vibration by a sound of. So anything, any multiple of the frequency that's smaller will cause it to vibrate. So we automatically know if we're talking about 440 that it can't be 880 because that's larger, okay? So that's the one that is not going to, right? It was asking which one's not going to force it in and it would be, we would technically circle that one because it's higher. The 440 will cause it to vibrate. And because this is half of 440, it will also cause it to vibrate. Beats are the result of the alternate cancellation and reinforcement of sound waves of and again, beats happen when you have slightly different frequencies. Two notes with frequencies of 66 and 70 are sounded together, the resulting beat frequency. So the beat frequency is always the difference between the frequencies. So you take frequency two and subtract frequency one. So in this case, we have 70 Hertz minus 66 hertz, which gives us a beat frequency of 4 hertz. The accepted value for the speed of sound in air is 332 meters per second at 0 degrees Celsius. The speed of sound in air increases 0.6 meters per second for each degree Celsius degree above 0. Compute the speed of sound at the temperature of the room you are in now. So I would say right now that my classroom is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 degrees Celsius. So to figure out what the speed of sound would be in my classroom, I will take the 20 and multiply that by 0.6 meters per second. So 20 times 0.6 means that the temperature, this isn't the final temperature, or the final speed, this just means that it's going to increase by 12 meters per second. So to figure out the final speed, I'm going to take 332 meters per second, what it is at 0 degrees Celsius, and add the 12 meters per second that it's going to increase, which gives me 344 meters per second. So that's how you can figure out the specific speed of sound in different temperatures. However, notice again, my temperature does have to be in degrees Celsius. So again, this was a little um, concept development page, kind of making sure you have a good understanding of sound. Have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.